So Landon asks, why do people stereotype banjo players as hillbillies? Well, well, Landon, for one, I mean, you know, a lot of us are hillbillies. I'm a flatlander, so I would never dare to call myself a hillbilly, but I am a cracker. And uh, so a lot of us are hillbillies. That's one reason. And But that stereotype really, you know, to be serious about it, that goes back that goes back to probably before the 1830s. Because I mean, think, you know, we were just talking about Joe Sweeney and the rise of the popularity of the banjo uh, with blackface minstrels on the stage. And most of that popularity was up north. People in the south already knew the banjo. Primarily, it was a black instrument, an instrument of the lower classes, uh, specifically enslaved people. So in the South, people didn't really think much of it. You either were into it or you weren't. And that's one reason why it's it's, it's almost never written about in the South um, before the 1830s. But you had Joe Sweeney and all these other minstrels, Billy Whitlock and Dan Emmett and all these people. Most of those guys were all Yankees. Most of those guys were from cities, urban centers in Ohio, New York, etc. And they, it's kind of just like how it is now. They made the banjo popular in the mainstream, and they did it by as a hillbilly instrument. I mean, really, the hillbilly, for lack of a better term, the earliest minstrel songs and the earliest minstrel characters are yes, they're black, but they're backwoodsmen. They're they're and they are in, they're enslaved, but they're these real rugged, rough black guys who um, the early minstrel songs. Um, like um, Jump Jim Crow, for example, it's all it's kind of like the modern like hip hop rap, like gangster kind of stuff. These guys are bragging about how they can whip their weight in wildcats. Um, they tear up more ground than a wagon load of taters. They, they brag about how tough they are and stuff. So from a very early time with the banjo became was made popular and commercialized as this kind of redneck um, rough hillbilly backwoods instrument. And of course, a lot of that stereotype drew on truth. I mean, it was an instrument that was mostly played by working class people and, and primarily in the back country and on the frontier areas and certainly on the plantations and stuff too. But, and Landon, I mean, it's just, it's, a, it's the stereotype persists because it works. It makes money and it makes money for who are the people who, who print the music? Who are the people who make the instructional videos for the most part? Who are the people who put on the concerts and the festivals? Just like in the 1830s, just like today, it's all Yankees. It's all, and I'm not saying that like disparagingly, but it's all urban people, mostly from the North, um, coastal elites, if you will. And it's been that way since the 1830s. And, this, and this, so the stereotype persists um, because it makes money. And then a lot of it is that movie, um, Deliverance. Now, Landon, I know you're underage, so I don't want to refer you to go watch Deliverance because it's a very graphic film. You should maybe watch it when you're older. Um, but there's, um, there's a scene in that film early on where there's basically this little retarded um, mountain boy who plays the banjo. And, uh, and that came out in the 70s and was wildly popular. And so that just stuff like that, it just makes, it works. People will pay to see it, um, you know, pretty much anytime I, if I play the banjo at, at, a, at a neighbor's house or something, somebody will always mention the movie Deliverance because it has such a deep impact on people's psyche. And as you all have noticed, it's socially acceptable to disparage uh, hillbillies, rednecks, crackers. Nobody will ever be canceled for making fun of a of a redneck or something like that. So it works and it, the stereotypes persist. So the, you know, the term hillbilly, it really, it goes back to England. Like a lot of the stuff in our culture, it goes back to England or Africa or something like that. But the term hillbilly and the term redneck actually goes back to England. And, uh, and these were people who lived up here. You have Scotland, down here you have England. And in the middle, you have that border region. That's where all the Scot most all the Scots Irish people, you know, are kind of from that area or Northern Ireland. And there are hills on that border region, and that's where the term hillbilly comes from. A lot of those boys were named William, and uh, William is long for Bill or Billy, and so they became known as hillbillies very early on. And then the, the term redneck also comes from England in the 16, I want to say the 15 or the 1600s when the Church of England first came out. And England was forced to switch from being a Catholic nation to a Protestant nation. Um, a lot of religious dissenters lived in that border area. And 
not just Catholics, but there were, I think mainly the redneck term comes from people who were Protestants, but they rejected the Church of England. They were Baptists, Methodists, Presbyterians, etc. And and some of the rebels who were involved in some of that political activity, I believe back in the, as early as the 15 or 1600s, they would wear a red a red um, rag around their neck as a way to, uh, certain gangs would wear a red scarf around their neck or something as a way to identify themselves. And there was often a lot of violence and so forth. And they, as the earliest mention of the you know use of the word redneck comes from England in that period, from re religious dissenters, people who were dissenting against the Church of England wearing a red neckerchief as a way to identify each other. 